Yes, Representative Tupola. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and opposition. Opposition, please proceed. Um, you know, if we're talking about trying to pass bills to decrease the prison population, last year, you know, for the edification of the members who weren't here when we passed the penal code bill, HB 2561 actually addressed repeat offenders for drug paraphernalia so that it wasn't mandatory that they put into prison and actually slowly that's affecting the amount of the prison population because the repeat offenders was really what the issue was. So this is suggesting that on drug paraphernalia that it be charged as a violation which in fact most of the time when somebody does have drug paraphernalia there's drugs inside so they get charged for PDD3 which is possession of a dangerous drug in the third degree so that together is both felonies as of right now. So making the drug paraphernalia into a violation a criminal, I guess, violation, not a civil. Um, that would actually make it go to district court. They'd have to appear in court, and it says here maybe they'd have a fine of $100, depends. So that those two things, maybe in one offense, would be separated because the f felony would still go to circuit court. So they go there, but if one of the two offset each other, then both of the cases would be thrown out. So say, for example, we do pursue this. How many people really don't go to prison now because of this drug par paraphernalia? Very few. We're not taking anybody out of prison because because say in the event that they don't want to press charges for the drug possession, then they can go to the PDD-3 or most of the time they're operating a off motorized vehicle without permission or they're driving one under the influence. So many other charges would be then superseded and this would be put down to the bottom. I'm just saying is that PSD su submitted numbers, 109 people with the drug paraphernalia as their number one, I guess their leading charge, when really right now that and PDD-3 are actually most of the time put together, so it's not sure if that's really the leading charge. Long story short, what I'm trying to say, if we're trying to affect how many people are in prison, this is probably not the way to do it. And if we're trying to decriminalize drugs, which I'm not for, then I'm definitely voting no against this, but I'm still concerned that this will just complicate a system, put possibly two offenses on two separate tracks, and not really do anything as far as decreasing the amount of prison inmates. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative, Representative Ward. Speaker, in addition to my colleagues' remarks f against this bill, I would add In opposition, things, please yes, proceed. In opposition. I, I take it from more of a sociological, anthropological, cultural point of view. This is going to enable the youth culture, which already is into the drug culture. This is going to pass, make a pass on some of these things that are now illegal to where it's a slap on the wrist. We are enabling a group of our youth who right now are already double the number of suicides. Drugs obviously increase that. And Mr. Speaker, I don't think this is gonna to lead to anything any good. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Any further discussion, members?